What are your thoughts on taking over from one of the great brand names of the world? So thanks so much for having me today, Bob. I'm so excited. I don't know if there's a better word to describe the way I'm feeling now and this week other than immense pride. I don't know that you can take over such an iconic institution like the New York Stock Exchange and not feel a tremendous sense of pride and excitement uh, about what we're going to be doing in the future. I mean, just look at today. We have three different uh, transactions happening right behind us. While you and I are talking, we have SPACs listing on us, we have business combinations, and we have the news of the day, the New Bank IPO, which is going to join our community of innovators, our community of entrepreneurs that really make us such a special place to be and the leader of, of capital markets. But importantly, the NYSE I'm inheriting today is a completely transformed business, and that is 100% due to my friend Stacey Cunningham, who I am so happy that she's going to be staying on the board, join the NYSE board, and enable me to ask for some strategic guidance as I assume this new role. Yeah, and of course, Stacey will still be here, and of course, we'll value her input. Now, the, the listings bring in revenues in several ways. There's yep. trading revenues, uh, but there's also listing fees and IPOs. Yep. Uh, now, you're still in a battle with NASDAQ for IPOs, uh, dollar value. NASDAQ has won uh, this year. Uh, listings very important for the revenues mm -hmm. down here. What are you going to do to compete with NASDAQ? How do you differentiate the NYSE? How do you sell the NYSE yeah. versus NASDAQ? Yeah, so I think it comes down to the way I'm thinking about my priorities for this business going into 2022. And I'd really classify that into three buckets. First bucket, unsurprising, given the fact that I'm a programmer by trade, a quant at heart, and a data scientist, is going to be focusing on technology and enabling our unique community of listed, commun listed market participants to tell their own technology stories. In today's market, in today's age, there is no company that is not a technology company and a data company at heart. And having the opportunity to tell their stories at the New York Stock Exchange and to work with them on, on their future path is something that I'm incredibly excited about. The second area, unsurprisingly, again, given the business I lead, uh, is ESG and continuing to add transparency around environmental, social, and governance, both for investors, but also for issuers as they start to think about challenges in environmental, social, and governance. And in fact, our parent company, ICE, to this morning announced that we're acquiring a fintech firm who's focused on climate change. And I'm looking forward to making that service available to data clients as well as our issuer community. And last but certainly not least, I am incredibly focused uh, on working with regulators, lawmakers, market participants to ensure that this remains the envy of the world, the home of capital markets. I want to hit on e ESG in a moment, yeah. but I want to ask you about another source of revenues yeah. down here, and that's rebates uh, from, from trading. Uh, there's a new sheriff over in Washington, SEC Chair Gary Gensler, has made a bit of a crusade about payment for order flow, not just payment from the, the brokerage, uh, from wholesalers to brokerages, but even the payments that the, that the NYSE and NASDAQ make for payment for, for order flow uh, here, we've got a new sheriff there, your new president. <laughs> what are you, you going to tell Gary about all of this? He seems quite concerned about it. It's an important part of NYSE's revenue. How are you going to come to some kind of agreement about what, what, if anything, needs to be done? Well, first, I'm going to, I'm looking quite forward to sitting down with Chair Gensler. I'm um, talking about a variety of issues. This happens to be one. It all comes back to transparency in my mind and liquidity and fostering good markets, transparent markets that provide good liquidity, good access to capital, and good uh, public access for investors. Is the average investor getting ripped off? Gen Mr. Gensler seems to imply that there's a problem here. The, the data doesn't seem to support that, but what's your thoughts? Well, the cost of retail trading has never been lower, and you've seen that continue. And you've seen that actually as a result of this new emerging group of retail traders that has joined our public markets through the pandemic.